Hi, my name is Mike Jones, and I'm presenting the paper titled Eval, Explainable Video Anomaly Localization by Ashish Singh of UMass Amherst, myself from Mitsubishi Electric Research Labs, and Eric Lernan Miller from UMass Amherst. This paper addresses the problem of video anomaly detection. We are given nominal video of a scene from which we learn a model of normal activity. Then, given test video of the same scene, we want to localize any activity that is different from what was seen in the nominal video. Our solution is to learn a model of nominal video consisting of high-level features such as object classes and directions and speeds of motion that occur in different locations of the video. Then, to detect anomalies, we compare the high-level features that occur in test video to the ones found in the nominal video. Four matches indicate anomalies. We test our method on five different test sets using three different evaluation criteria and achieve state-of-the-art accuracy on most of them. Because the high-level attributes estimated for each video volume are human understandable, our system can provide explanations for every anomaly detection. Now we will explain each of these components of our approach in more detail. The first stage of our approach is to train deep networks to estimate high-level attributes of video volumes. A high-level attribute is a human understandable characteristic of the content of a video volume. In this work, we train deep networks to estimate the object classes, directions of motion, speeds of motion, and fraction of the video volume that is stationary. This stage is only done once. The resulting networks are used for every new scene. The fact that our method does not need any deep network training to model a new scene makes it much more practical for real-world applications. One of the high-level attributes our system uses is the appearance attribute. Appearance attributes are learned by training an object recognizer that takes a 64 by 64 pixel RGB image as input and outputs which of eight object classes are present, if any. Training data comes from various sources, our own wet set of webcam surveillance videos, CIFAR-10, CIFAR-100, and MIO-TCD datasets. The penultimate layer's 128-dimensional output vector is used as a high-level appearance feature. For video volumes with multiple frames, a single feature vector is computed by averaging feature vectors for each frame. The other high-level attributes our system uses are different types of motion attributes. The motion attributes are learned by training four independent motion networks that take a 64 by 64 by 10 pixel RGB video volume as input and output one, a direction of motion histogram, two, a directional speed vector, three, the fraction of stationary pixels, which is inversely proportional to the size of the movie objects, and four, a background classifier. Training examples are automatically generated from webcam surveillance video by first computing pixel-wise optical flow and then computing the four attributes. Simple 3D convolutional architectures are used for each motion network. The penultimate 128 length feature vectors from the first three networks are used as motion feature vectors. The second stage of our approach is to use the previously trained high-level attribute networks to provide feature vectors that describe the appearance and motion within a video volume. The nominal video for a scene is divided into a grid of regions. Overlapping regions are used in practice, although non-overlapping regions are shown in the figure. And a fixed size video volume is scanned spatially and temporally over the video. An exemplar-based model of the typical high-level feature vectors found in nominal video for each grid region of a particular scene is then built using an exemplar selection algorithm. The feature vectors from the penultimate layers of each deep network are concatenated and used as high-level feature vectors, also called exemplars, in the model. These can be mapped to high-level attributes using the final linear layer of each network. The resulting model consists of a set of exemplars for each grid region. The model represents all normal activity occurring in each region of the scene. Our algorithm for exemplar selection is straightforward. For each spatial region in the scene, we iterate over all video volumes in the nominal training video and compute feature vectors for each. We store the first feature vector as an exemplar. Subsequent feature vectors are compared to the current set of exemplars, and if the minimum distance is greater than a threshold, the feature vector is added to the exemplar set. The third stage of our method is anomaly detection on test video from the same scene from which the model was built. We scan the same fixed size video volume over the test video spatially and temporally as before. A feature vector concatenated from the penultimate layers of the attribute networks is computed for each video volume. The feature vector is then compared to the exemplars in the model for the corresponding region. The distance to the nearest neighbor exemplar is the anomaly score. If there are no similar exemplars to a test feature vector, it means this video volume is unlike any seen in the nominal video and is therefore anomalous. This is a method on publicly available datasets for single scene video anomaly detection. UCSD PED 1, PED 2, CUHK Avenue, Street Scene, and Shanghai Tech. The final one is not single scene, but we show that our method works well on it nonetheless. Here we show results on CUHK Avenue, again using the RBDC, TBDC, and frame level evaluation criteria. RBDC and TBDC accurately measure spatial as well as temporal localization, while frame level only measures temporal localization. 
Results in red are the best accuracy for each criteria, while results in black boldface are second best. We see that our method does best for RBDC and second best for TBDC on this data set. For the Shanghai Tech data set, we achieve state-of-the-art results for both the RBDC and TBDC criteria. Street Scene is one of the most difficult test sets and is the only one to have a significant number of location-dependent anomalies, meaning anomalies such as jaywalking or biking in the wrong lane, for which an activity is normal in some locations and anomalous in others. Here we improve over the previous state-of-the-art for both the RBDC and TBDC criteria. Now I'll describe our method's explainability. We use the graphical panel shown here to visualize the various high-level attributes estimated for video volume. The bar graph at the top left shows the sigmoid output for each object class. The eight object classes are ordered from left to right as follows. Person, car, cyclist, dog, tree, house, skyscraper, and bridge. Outputs above 0.5 are colored green and indicate the likely presence of the class, and outputs below 0.5 are red and indicate absence of the class. The bar graph at the top right shows the estimate of the fraction of stationary pixels. All white indicates no motion, and all black indicates every pixel in the video volume is moving. The direction of motion histogram is visualized at the bottom left. The length of a ray is proportional to the fraction of pixels estimated to be moving in each of the 12 directions of motion. Finally, the bottom right visualizes the average speed of pixels moving in each of the 12 directions of motion. Here we visualize an anomaly occurring in a frame of street scene. The bounding box indicates a spatial region with the ground truth anomaly. The top 10 exemplars learned for this region are shown first. They illustrate that the model has learned that for this region of the scene, there are either cars with no movement, cars moving down and right relatively fast, unknown objects moving down and right fast, or background with no movement. The high level attributes for a test video volume centered around the jaywalker show that this is a person moving right at relatively moderate speed. The closest exemplar to this is an unknown object moving down and right relatively fast. This is a poor match, and thus the anomaly score is high, indicating an anomaly. Here we show an example of our method running on a sequence from street scene. Regions in red indicate anomalies detected by our method. Our method correctly detects the anomalous jaywalker and has no false positives. Here is another example where our method correctly detects a car making a U-turn. Here is an example from PED2 where our method correctly detects cyclists riding on the sidewalk and a person walking in an unusual direction. 